Ladies and gentlemen of the Short Game Theater.com video, we're going to be discussing a whole bunch of news stories. Re Vega 10 release date, the RX 480 being unlockable if you've got a 4GB model to an 8GB model, and also multi adapter under DirectX 12, and a whole bunch more things besides. But the one that is probably the most pertinent for us to start with is the RX 480 and the power issue. So, the reason I want to start with this is because we're going to be reviewing the RX 480. In fact, it's inside my test rig at the moment. I'm actually using it to record this video. And I've already done some preliminary testing with Tomb Raider and a couple of other games just to make sure that, you know, the car's not exploding as we bought it from retail. So it was a good idea to, you know, test it before we start to do any real benchmarking. You know, it so far is performing pretty excellently. But there is a driver coming out in the next day or so and it is going to be known as the 16.7.1 now the long story short version of this um, drive update is you're going to increase the performance of the card by about three percent but it's going to reduce the power draw from the pcie connector now do bear in mind the rx 480 is still running perfectly fine and still within the remit within the the safety levels of the PCIe and for example even the GTX 960 did very similar in terms of its power consumption and we've had no issues with the GTX 960 we've done some testing on that including a lot of overclocking and that's been fine and so far our RX 480 without the driver has also been fine but regardless AMD are releasing this driver revision now it's quite nice because what they've also done is allow you to have a compatibility option in the global settings of their menu. What this will do is reduce the power consumption even further, but obviously in which case you might notice that the performance of the card slightly goes down. What does that all mean to you? Well, if you've got no issues at all with your RX 480 at the moment, congratulations, you're getting about 3% extra performance for, well, free. And if you've been a bit concerned about the RX 480 power issues, then, well, this solves them. And if you want heavier overclocking potential, then, once again, you can go with a third-party uh, cooler vendor slash um, IIB partner variant of the card in the next couple of days anyway. Now, one really interesting story, which originated from Tech Power Up. There is a 4GB and an 8GB model of the RX 480. I think everyone knows that by now. But what's really interesting is you may well be able to flash your particular 4GB to an 8GB. Now I'll put a link in the video description and there are some caveats to this. Firstly, you don't know which version of the memory modules you've got unless you buy the card and then you remove the the cooler and actually look physically at the dims so what this means is that you could buy it and it could just be that you have yes the standard variant four gigabyte um, chips which would mean that you cannot physically flash on the other hand you may also be fine and have the um, standard eight times eight gigabyte chips which means that you would be able to also run at eight gigabits per second and then you could flash and get the same performance as an individual who was to rush out and buy an 8 gigabyte model of the card. The reason that you want to make sure that you check the chips first is because if you go ahead and flash without checking that, then you're basically could end up with a brick rather than a graphics card. What does this mean? Well, personally, from my point of view, if you are an individual who is looking to buy an 8GB card, I would buy an 8GB card rather than risking it, unless we could see a pattern that, for example, um, Sapphire consistently put out 8GB versions of the card and they're just simply modding them or whatever of a vendor. And that way you don't need to one risk of, hey, I might get a, just a 4GB version. If you own a 4GB card and you're willing to take the risk of opening it up and taking a look at the chips, then more power to you. That means you could potentially have an 8GB. But if you own a 4GB variant of the card and you don't, and you open it up and you don't have um, 
the possibility of flashing, well, then you're not losing anything, right? This is not something that we can test because we've actually got the 8 gigabyte model of the card of the RX 480. So, hey, it's just, if you want to try it, feel free. Keeping on to the last subject of AMD, and that is the Vega 10. So, supposedly, the launch is still going to be in the first half of 2017, and it's still going to utilize high bandwidth memory 2, and naturally is going to be aiming at the very highest end, on upper echelons of the performance brackets. And there is also the possibility that it could come as soon as the first quarter of 2017, according to Fudzilla. Now, the reason this is really interesting is we've known that the... Polaris 10, and this is according to AMD themselves, they confirmed this in another interview, the Polaris 10 architecture that we're running right now with the 36 compute units is the full design. But the reason that people are a bit puzzled is because there are numerous reports that the RX 490 is a thing. And by which I mean that some... Some folks have even noticed that the Sapphire Radeon 490 8GB variant is actually listed under Sapphire Tech if you were to go and actually get support for a particular item, which is really interesting. And it's either an oversight or they are, I guess, jumping the gun a little bit. And AMD2 did very similar. They actually had a 490 entry listed if you wanted to redeem a coupon so that you could get a free copy of a game on their own website. So it's definite that the 490 is coming. So the question that is on everyone's lips, what the hell is it going to be? Is it the Vega, in which case the 490 is really being publicized early because that's almost, you know, basically nine months into the future? Or is it going to be something different? Is it going to be a Polaris 9? question mark or is the 490 two 480s on the same board we just don't know so place your bets now the last thing i want to talk about is directx 12 and multi gpu which may be a bit of a sore subject for many of you so as you're probably aware multi gpu and directx 12 have had a bit of a rocky relationship in fact to say it's a rocky relationship is a bit of an understatement a lot of DirectX 12 titles do not support SLI or Crossfire, which means that essentially DirectX 12 mode, you're basically pissing away performance in many cases simply because you can't enjoy the extra performance of running your second graphics card, which makes things even suckier if you own, let's say, two 980 Ti's or 1080's. But... Microsoft are on the case. Microsoft are going to provide an abstraction layer to help multi-GPU. This was actually confirmed on GitHub. And I said, and I quote, uh, Yes, the layer will be available in this repo. We will be publish publishing two MGPU, multi-GPU sample projects along with it. One using the layer and one not using the layer. We're making some final tweaks and then doing additional testing and plan to post it all soon. So what does that mean? Well, with the abstraction layer, it means that developers won't need to put so much work in to get multi-GPU working for DirectX 12. They could basically use the abstraction layer as a foundation, and theoretically, we should start seeing quite nice boost in performance. It's going to be curious if developers are going to retrospectively go back and then add that support for, let's say, Gears of War, or even Quantum Break more specifically quantum break let's just be honest because the performance of quantum break is not exactly ideal but while i'm thankful that this is actually a thing and that they're working on it i do feel it's a bit slower than what maybe it should have been um and personally i wish that multi gpu had been made more of a priority it really shows at least to me that they hadn't really thought this through <laughs> and you know, I'm not saying that DirectX 12 is a failure or anything like that because obviously it's, when it works well, it's a vast improvement over DirectX 11. And for individuals who are only running one graphics card, which I imagine is the majority of you who are listening to this, it doesn't make much of a difference. But for folks who have the 
4K screen setups, or they're running uh, G-Sync or FreeSync monitors, or they're running uh, multi-GPUs, it's been a bit of a nightmare because of certain missing features, for example, exclusive full screen and other such things, which Windows 10 has certainly started to uh, cause issues with. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, it's been a bit of an itsy-bitsy one today because of the RX 480 stuff that we're working on in the background. With any luck in the world, the RX 480 re review should be up, let's say, Sunday, Monday at the latest. Then I have a GTX 1070 coming, which I'll be reviewing. Um, that's a review sample. And we've also got a few other bits and bobs as well. Um, working on a, another tech video. I don't want to say what that is yet, but it's a. Um, it's been one that a lot of folks have requested. Let's just say that. And that's about it for this video. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. And do the normal like, subscribe, share, blah, blah, blah thing. But anyway, take care of yourselves. Oh, um, see you soon.